Hi again, everybody. Um, so now you should have already watched the video that I made um, of the relationship between the volume of pyramids and prisms. So if you haven't done that, go back to the um, Bear Cross post and just watch that other video first. Um, so this is just like a little explanation about where that came from, right? So we had, I, I drew these two nets out um, and I created a um, prism and a pyramid that had the same height and the same base, right? So they both had a square base that was two by two um, and they were both about one and seven, seven sixteenths of an inch tall. Um, and what you should have seen was that it took three full pyramids of rice to fill this prism with rice completely. And so what I wanted you guys to see was that the relationship between finding the volume of a prism and finding the volume of a pyramid um, is this one third relationship. So if I know the volume of this, if I divide by it, uh, three, I'll get the volume of this. So here are the two theorems that kind of go along with that. Again, these theorems look exactly like when we were finding the volumes of um, prisms and cylinders, except for now there's that one third in there because we're talking about pyramids and cones. So we're missing some of that volume. So here are two problems for you to try. So just take a minute, pause me, try these two problems, finding the volume of these two solids, um, and then we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so hopefully now you've had some time to look through these. Um, as we look at this first one, this is a um, triangular pyramid. So we have to find the area of the base. Um, and the area of the base is just one half base times height. So one half, four times six. The height, which they gave you here, this perpendicular segment here, is 9. And then again, we're multiplying by a third. And so we get that the um, volume of this solid is 36 cubic meters. If we look at the second one, at the cone, again, here we are with our volume formula, 1 third base times height. The base here is a circle, so it's pi r squared. We're still multiplying by the height. The radius is 2.2, the height is 4.5, we plug everything in and we can either get it in terms of pi, 7.26 pi, or if you approximate in your calculator, it should be about 22.81 cubic centimeters. Um, so again, here we are trying to do um, a little algebraic manipulation to... Um, figure out the side length of the square base of a pyramid. So if you can imagine what a pyramid looks like, hold on, I'll just see if I can get an image for you. Okay, so here we have some pyramids, right? And if you look at all of these pyramids, these are all square pyramids. So their base is a square. Um, and then they've got these four triangular sides. Um, and so if we think about um, a pyramid, that had a height of 144 meters. So from the tip of the pyramid straight down into the center of the pyramid, that height is 144 meters. And it has a volume of over 2 million cubic meters. So we want to try to figure out how long is one side of the pyramid, um, knowing that it's a square base. So we know that this side length and the side length back here would be the same. So take a minute and see if you can figure that out, um, and then we'll go through the answer. So hopefully you've had a chance to pause me and try it. Um, but so in this case, because we're given the volume, we're gonna be working backwards to try to find the side length. Um, and what we know is that the volume of that pyramid is one third base times height. So this is the volume that we were given. We know it's equal to one third, the base, which we don't know yet, times the height, which we have. When we divide, we get that the base 
is equal to 46,384.4. Um, but then we also know that the base, because it's a square, is equal to one side times the other, and they are both equal. So we can just say it's equal to S times S. And then if we take the square root distance, of that, if we take the square root of that, we find that one side of that pyramid would be 215.4. Can you use this as the pyramid? Okay, so here's a couple more for you to try. This is a cone, and then this is another composite shape. So we have a... Um, pyramid on top of a cube. So try these two and then we will go from there. All right, so if we look at our cone here, this one's pretty straightforward. We're just doing one third base times height. Um, the radius is five. The height we have to find using Pythagorean theorem. So here is my height calculation using Pythagorean theorem. I know the hypotenuse of the triangle. I know one leg, so I can find this height is 6.2. That's my work for finding the height using Pythagorean theorem. I plug everything in. Here's my volume. For this one at the bottom, we're doing two separate calculations and then we're adding them together. So first we're going to find the volume of the pyramid, which is one third base times height again. The base is just a square, a six by six square. The height is also six. So this is just one third six cubed, which is 72. The volume of the cube is just 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216. And then when we add them together, we get the total volume of the whole shape, 288 cubic meters. All right, last two here. Um, these ones sort of take this same idea of finding volume of a cone and add an application to it. So thinking about um, a rate. Um, of something coming out of a funnel. And so here, again, they give you the dimensions of the funnel. They tell you the radius and the height so you can find the volume. And then they're asking you, if this was full of sand, how long would it take for the sand, um, or what would be the rate of change of the sand coming out of this funnel if you know it takes 2.8 seconds for all of the sand to be out of the funnel? Um, so take a minute and try that one. And then if we look at it, our volume calculation is pretty straightforward. One third base times height to find the volume. But then again, for this flow piece, we're just taking that volume, dividing by the time, and then we're gonna get that rate of flow in milliliters per second. This second one is just a follow-up, and it's just talking about if the time was a little bit longer. If we use a different kind of sand that took a little longer to come out of the funnel, what would its flow rate be? And if we do that out, we would see that um, that rate would be um, a little bit lower because it's taking longer at 31.4 milliliters per second. Um, so that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you are asking them either during class or coming to tutorials. Um, and I will post the problems in the portal for you. Um, see you soon.